sign that says technical difficulties. But I feel like there's a... No, I'm calling again. No, I'm good? Okay, cool. All right. I'm going to start again. <laughs> good morning, church. I <laughs> uh, hope we're surviving uh, this lovely weather that we've been having. Um, and we're going to continue on uh, from where we were last week when we have been looking into the call of the gospel. Uh, last week we looked at who, who is the gospel all about, and uh, the typical Sunday school answer of Jesus is correct there. Uh, and we looked at 10 different um, ways that the call of the gospel is about Jesus. And this week we're going to look at the why. Uh, the why of the call of the gospel and to finish off our little series, uh, Paul wrote, uh, next Sunday is going to talk on how, how we actually go about sharing the gospel. But today we look at the why. It's to help lead into Alpha, which was mentioned in the announcements. Um, quite a few people who come to our church uh, became Christians at Alpha or during that process of being at Alpha. Maybe it took a little bit longer afterwards. That Alpha was a huge help to them, answered a lot of questions. So I really encourage you to invite people along, be involved. Um, just being there is a great thing as a support to anyone else who may be there. It's also just a great thing to go to and be reminded of why you believe in Jesus, why you follow him, uh, and to help maybe also build in some answers for yourself to share with other people if they might happen to ask you questions about why you have faith in Christ. So it's a great thing to be a part of. Last week we looked at the description of what the gospel even is, and so we looked at the fact that the gospel is the good news about Jesus Christ, which is God's power to save all who believe it and turn from sin to follow him. And so that was the base description and I shared a little analogy about how it's like throwing a rock through a window of a very dark house and for the first time that person is seeing the light, the hope that they can have in Christ. And that's what we try to do when we're sharing the gospel. And part of what we did last week is I sent out, there was some copies on the front desk but they went faster than I expected to be honest. I sent out a document which was based on last week's sermon, which was the 10 things about the, the who of the gospel. And I left you with a challenge. Uh, if you were here on Sunday, I left you with a challenge. And that was to see what extra things you might be able to learn about Jesus and the gospel and having the opportunity or looking for opportunities or maybe being bold enough to share those things with people. And I know there was a few people at the end of last week's service who were saying to me, Mitch, make sure you get me a copy of that. That would be really great to, I, I could answer this person, their question. So this is the moment where I first get to kind of put it on you a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, um, but in your own mind, how do you go with either looking deeper into the who of the gospel and into some of these points and how did you go sharing some of the things of Jesus. I'm going to give you a second to kind of give yourself a grading of 1 to 10. 1 being, yeah maybe not so good, kind of left it on Sunday and didn't look at it again. And 10 being like, oh I actually looked at one of these and like found more verses and, and even shared it with somebody. Now that is not an easy thing to do. I'm not going to act like this is simple and, and easy going and you can do it basically with no emotion or no worries. It is a really hard thing to do to share about Jesus and very, very difficult, I think, um, to share to somebody who has heard really nothing about Jesus or has heard just snippets which aren't quite adding up. We are having a discussion with the kids during the week and James, I'm going to pick on him for a second, he would not remember this at all, um, but he was trying to tell us some things about Jesus and he's heard bits, obviously, from being in kids' church. 
church and um, well, he's a pastor's kid, so it's just he, he has to deal with that. Um, but he has a really interesting way of explaining Jesus' death and resurrection, um, which is pretty much um, he got some holes in his hands and then he just went, I died. And then he went, oh, I'm back alive again. And that's the gospel message to a three year old. <laughs> Uh, which is great, it's great, um, but then of course he, he had some questions which we really struggled to try and format into a two-year-old mindset, which um, is all based around Spider-Man, um, and skateboarding, and running really fast. Uh, that's about the three things he thinks of, and eating all that food. Uh, so four things. It can be really difficult. To help kind of share the difficulty in that, we've got a funny little video clip uh, to have a look at. Morning, Jim. Robert. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Free gift. Sharing your faith doesn't have to be hard. Let's do it together.
And don't worry, because as you keep asking why, the best thing about following God is that you can never get to a point where all of a sudden he seems small. You never get to that moment where all of a sudden you've asked why so many times that you have all the answers about God and, and what's happening in your life or what's going to happen in, in eternity and all these things. We are, we are given glimpses of things but not the full picture. You'll never get to that moment where you go, oh, I'm kind of finished asking why. This is all done. I've got everything sorted here in a ni nice, neat list. Uh, and I can just go around and show everyone that, and we'll all know everything, and, and we'll, be, we'll be complete and finished. It doesn't, doesn't really work that way. It says in Psalm 147, verse 5, it says, Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. If his understanding has no limit, then we are never going to get to the end of asking why, what's happening what is going on and understanding him more and more. I've been asking why a lot lately and because I know the kids are still in, kids, this is a question for you. I'm about to grab something and, and you need to be able to answer what on earth this thing is, okay? You should get it fairly simply, really. Kids, does anyone know what, what this is? Someone said it. It's a skateboard. Pretty simple, right? It has wheels, it has wood, it's a skateboard. What if I told you though that you're not actually 100% correct? You're not 100% correct. What else do you think this could be? A lump of wood. A lump of wood? You're not wrong. What else? A display item? A display item? Yeah? Not bad. An artwork? An artwork? Maybe? Showcase? That's pretty good answers. You're still not there yet, you're still all wrong. Miles? A mini surfboard? Not bad. Up the back there, I can see your hand. I can't hear you though. A belly board. You could ride on your belly? You could do that. My kids ride on the back sides. <laughs> now, you're brave. An ironing board? <laughs> you could do that, I suppose. <laughs> what else? I, I'm pointing this way, but I can't, couldn't see the hand. Form of transport. Form of transport? That's good. A way of hurting yourself. A way of you hurting yourself, yeah. Wheels, yes, wheels. What if I told you that this is the most terrifying object in the world? Maybe not in the world, but most terrifying object that you could stand on. It is absolutely a death trap, this thing. It is completely terrifying. Yet at the same time, it can actually be really fun, really exhilarating, really exciting, as long as you stay on. But it can be a great thing, and can be a really, really painful thing. I hope I don't stand on that while I walk around. The reason I bring the skateboard up is because a few years ago, uh, the Tokyo Olympics were on, and my eldest daughter, Lily, uh, was we're trying to show her the, the different sports that they, that they do. Uh, and so we're just basically leaving the TV on all day because that's what you do when the Olympics are on. And you just see different stuff and you stop for a moment and you go, oh, look at that, that's cool. And, and she was watching it and the, um, one of the host um, responsibilities is to pick some different sports that maybe aren't normally in the Olympics, and so they picked skateboarding. And it's actually a very big sport in Asia, um, and so the skateboarding was on, and the women came out to do their competition, and Lily was sitting in front of the TV, and she's like, Dad, do girls skateboard? I said, yeah, they do. She's like, wow, that's awesome. I'm like, yeah, it is pretty cool, isn't it? And I thought that's as far as the story was going. She watched it and watched it and watched it and watched like every skater and then the females competition finished and then the men's was on and so she watched the men's too and she's gone, Dad, can you teach me how to skate? And I was like, yeah, I did a bit in, as a little rat bag teenager, sure, I can, I can show you a bit of skating, thinking it's not going to go that far. This is going to be just a real simple, real easy, we'll skate around on some flat concrete somewhere and that's about as far as it goes. 
Uh, fast forward today, all five of us get out there skating at least a couple of times a week. Um, they're certainly getting to the point where this went from a really pleasurable, easy, what a great father I am going skating with my daughter, to I'm um, standing at the top of a ramp going, why am I doing this? This is the dumbest thing, the scariest thing I could be doing right now. And because I'm trying to be the cool skating dad, I got no pads on, nothing, just there going, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot, you're an idiot. Okay, get brave, go. That's the whole process when we go to skating. It's not the whole process, my wife's shaking her head. No stories at the end of this. <laughs> I certainly haven't chickened out quite a few times. But we're in that space now where the why of what we are doing as we go and have our family time together and we head down to the skate park is really important. Because it's gotten to that moment where it's like, ah, oh, I wasn't thinking about the fact that she would want to keep going with this and then our second child, Chelsea, would want to do the same as her big sister and that our little boy would want to do the same as his big sisters and of course the more they've seen skating, the more things they've wanted to try and they're like, Dad, can you show us how to do that and do that? And I'm like, I haven't done that in like 20 years. And I don't remember ever asking or thinking about the fact that I was going to hurt myself when I was doing it as a teenager. You just did it. There was no, there was no thought process at all when I was a teenager. You just saw something, thought it was cool, and you went ahead and, and you did it. But you get to that stage in your life, and I think we get to that stage in our, in our Christian life as well, where our why becomes really important because the thing we are trying to do is really, really difficult and maybe has some bigger implications. And as I look around and see our church family and the amount of broken ankles we have going on right now, yeah, there's some implications if I decide to try this new trick to show the kids something and all of a sudden I hurt myself. There's some implications around all those things. There's implications when we go to share Christ as well. There's lots of moments where I have asked myself in the middle of sharing the gospel, why am I doing this? Because maybe the person I'm sharing with is someone I really care about and I'm concerned with how they might respond. Maybe it's someone I'm only just kind of getting to know and I don't want to make anything awkward or strange or, or, or ruin something. Maybe this person is very aggressive and uh, I'm trying to be careful about how I word things because I don't want to get into a huge argument. I just want to share the gospel. There's lots of whys as we come about sharing the gospel. Sometimes the why is simply from the fact that we are in our own heads a little too much, but it is the reality of sharing the gospel. It does involve us. It's all about Jesus, but it does involve us. And so sometimes, as you're skating around, sharing the gospel, it can be fun and exciting and it's all positive. And sometimes you're standing on the top of that ramp and you're going, wow, this is a lot steeper than I remember ever doing. Uh, and you, you need to know your why. Here's a moment for you guys to shine. Amongst yourselves, I want to see if perhaps you already know all the answers to everything I'm about to share. In which case, we can wrap this up and go home. No, not really. Uh, I want to see if you already know some of the answers we're going to share. And then we'll have one special little video um, from, from people that you know. Uh, so I'm going to give you a minute. Turn to the person next to you, behind you, in front of you. Uh, get your kids involved and answer the question, why should we share the gospel? Why should we share about Jesus? And I'll get a couple of answers when you are done. So go for it, you've got about, I'll give you a one minute to try and share.
couple more seconds. I can see a few people still in conversation. A couple more seconds. Seems like a lot of people have a lot of answers, which is great. I'm wondering if there's a couple of people brave enough to maybe call out some answers, put your hands up, and, and call out some answers as to why you should share about Jesus. Anyone feeling brave? We have a few people over here. Yep. Did any of the people that? Don't know Jesus, who aren't Christians, to, to know Jesus, to become Christians. Absolutely. Yeah, you can share that God made the world. A lot of people aren't too sure about that, so that's something good to share about. Uh, we've got a few in the middle here. I'm going to go... Um, I, haven't, I haven't picked Ray yet, so I'll go Ray. He's God and he's better to know. That's pretty good, isn't it? Um, any, I'll, I'll take one more. One more. Mel? Um, Yeah, we definitely shouldn't hide it. It should be on our hearts to be ready to, to share with people because it is the, the light that people need in their world. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for answering those, guys. But we have a special little video because I didn't, I didn't want you guys to forget about um, one of our church family who are tripping around Australia. And I asked them if they could send in a video answering why we should share about Jesus. Now, they did record this near the water. So do your best listening. Uh, and we'll see how it goes. Why should we share about Jesus? To share God's glory. So when Jesus comes back, more people will know about him and go to his holy kingdom. So everyone can feel his peace, presence and love and uh, know that they're going into his holy kingdom. right now um, as they trip around Australia and great reminder just to be praying for them as they travel um, and educate their kids while they're going. But one of the things they talked about there a lot it was to do with God's kingdom, was to be able to invite people in to God's kingdom and how great that is for people and how it reminds us that his kingdom continues to grow and we can be a part of, of helping it grow. We're going to have a look at our passage today um, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. We're going to start a couple of verses before um, in verse 9 because this is our first kind of point towards why we need to be sharing the gospel. What's our big why as maybe we get a little worried or a little scared. And it's 2 Corinthians 5 verse 9. So we make it our goal to please him. It's no secret that as we read the Bible and we read Jesus' instructions to us as his followers, that he calls us to evangelise. It's part of what Jesus did and he calls us to do the same thing. Probably most recognisable in Matthew 18, 18 to 20, where it says, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go, make disciples of all nations, baptising them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the end of the age. So the first why is actually to obey Jesus' call on our life. It's obedience. It's not something very fun to talk about, but it is obedience. And if we're going to be obedient to anyone, should probably be obedient to the Son of God. I feel like he's probably a few ranks higher than where we are in the authority list. Uh, so we need to obey our Saviour. 
The second why is because a lot of people don't want to, to pay attention to this, uh, cer certainly out in the world. But the second why is because we will be judged by Jesus. There will be a time where we will be judged by Jesus. So the second why is from having a healthy fear of Jesus. A healthy fear of Jesus. It says this in 2 Corinthians 5, 10 to 11. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade others. And really, we should have a fear for where the unsaved will be spending their eternity. It should worry us. We know people, I, I have people I dearly love who I know aren't following Christ and are really kind of putting up that, that cold shoulder to it. And it hurts, but it's actually kind of a good hurt. And I fear for them, but it's actually kind of a, a, a good fear for them because it compels me to share the gospel. It compels me to share Christ with them, no matter how many times they choose to ignore me. Um, the beautiful thing about family is that you get to keep coming back to them, um, even if they don't want to hear it. <laughs> We're going to come down to, to verse 14 for the next one. Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And so the third why is gratitude to Jesus. We see, we read how Jesus took on the punishment that we deserve as sinners. And instead he took because of his love for his Father and for us. So this drives us, his followers, to share about him. We never forget the cross. We have it in the back here. Many people have it on their necklaces and, and all sorts of other places. We never forget the punishment that Christ took that we deserve. And so our third why is gratitude to Jesus. The fourth why of why we should share the gospel gets us into the passage that was read earlier. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 to 21. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The message of Jesus' death and resurrection, of God reuniting us to himself, that has been given to us to share, we have a mission from God. We are his ambassadors. That's a pretty big deal, to be his ambassadors. That's a huge purpose in our life. The last why we'll look at focuses on the final two verses of the passage that we had today in chapter 6 there, verses 1 to 2, and it is to do with time. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, in the time of my favour, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. Even though it's been a while since Jesus returned to heaven, now in the timeline of humanity is the time to share the gospel. We are in the last days before Jesus' return. We don't know exactly where in the timeline we sit. It's not for us to know, but it's closer than it was last week. It's closer than what it was yesterday, and it's closer than it was 10 seconds ago. And so we are in that moment in history. The next major moment in history is Christ returning. So we are in that space in history where now is the time of God's kingdom growing. Now is the time of the call on us to share the gospel. So we ended up looking at five different reasons for why. I wonder if we can have the, that summary page on the, on the screen there. We have obedience, 
We have healthy fear, we have gratitude, we have ambassadors, and we have time. Five major reasons that we can hold on to. So in the midst of being kind of worried, maybe a little stressed, concerned, standing on the top of that ramp watch, with all your kids watching you about to go down, thinking, why am I doing this again? There's a great reason. There's many great reasons as to why we should share them. And a lot of those reasons are actually backed up in our time that we spend together doing communion. So I'm going to ask if our um, communion uh, people might be able to come to the front and be ready to pass that out. But I'd like